So we're uh, starting by zooming in on the airlock. This is where EV1 and EV2 will egress to begin the EVA. EV1 will egress first. He'll be the one wearing the red stripes. And he'll bring some tools and equipment for the SSU R&R with him. He'll be followed by EV2, Tim Peak, uh, in the white stripes. Tim Peak will be carrying their spare SSU out to the work site. Before the crew leave the vicinity of the airlock, they'll take a few moments to attempt stow some other tools and equipment for subsequent EVA tasks on the outside of the airlock where they're easily accessible. Once that's complete, EV-1 will translate to the starboard seat cart where he will retrieve a foot restraint, which he'll use for worksite stabilization at the SSU. Once he has retrieved the foot restraint, he will connect the safety tether anchors for both crew members to handrails on the end of the S1 truss segment. Connecting the safety tether anchors out here will enable them to reach all the way to the SSU worksite, which is on the far end of the truss. EV-1 will then translate to the SSU worksite, where he will install and set up the foot restraint, uh, positioning it to give him good access to the SSU itself. Once that's complete, he'll stow the tools and equipment he brought with him where they're easily accessible. Meanwhile, EV-2 will also translate to the SSU worksite. And when he arrives, he will work to stow the spare SSU where it's uh, within easy reach for the R&R. He'll then position himself where he can get good visuals on the SSU worksite and easily access the tools and equipment that have been brought out. EV-1 will ingress the foot restraint and verify that he's in a good position for the SSU R&R. Crew will wait for the beginning of uh, night and when that occurs, they'll begin the SSU R&R. EV-1 will remove the failed SSU and present it to EV-2 for inspection, then stow it on his BRT so it's out of the way as the crew retrieves the spare SSU from the bag. EV-1 will then uh, install the spare SSU and bolt it down to the space station. Once that's complete, crew will work together to put the failed SSU uh, back in the bag that the uh, spare SSU originally came out in, uh, which EV-2 will carry back to the airlock. EV-1 will work to clean up the work site, and then will follow EV-2 back to the airlock, uh, dropping off the foot restraint on his way. EV-2 will place the failed SSU back inside the airlock and uh, be joined by EV-1. Uh, EV-1 will chain, ch trade out some equipment and then begin his translation to the NPV worksite for the next task. Uh, on the way to this worksite, EV-1 will stop and drop a cable on the port side of Z-1. It'll be waiting here for EV-2 to connect later in the EVA. Then EV-1 will continue to the NPV. This is a non-propulsive vent uh, worksite where he'll be installing this non-propulsive vent. Um, in order to install the NPV, he, he will first remove a cover plate that was installed on the same location where the NPV goes and then place the NPV on the end of node 3. Here we have some NBL video of the crew practicing this task. You can see that the clearance between node 3 and PMM is very tight, uh, making this a challenging work site for the EV crew. Once installation of the NPV is complete, EV-1 will translate to the aft side of the vehicle, uh, and specifically to the aft side of PMA-3. Here, he will release a PMA-3 launch restraint bracket. This will free some cables, uh, which will be disconnected on a subsequent EVA, allowing the PMA-3 to be relocated to an alternate location on space station. Once this is complete, EV-1 will translate back to the airlock, where he will drop off the tools and equipment he used for the NPV, and pick up an empty bag, which he will use for the retrieval of the CP9 luminaire. So that's camera port nine. Um, the light has some burned out light bulbs. So he'll translate out to this work site, uh, retrieve the luminaire, which you can see here in white, and he'll place that luminaire in the bag he brought out with him. Once he has retrieved the luminaire, he'll uh, do a few cleanup tasks at the worksite and then translate back to the airlock. Meanwhile, EV2 uh, will have retrieved uh, the IDA cable bag. So this bag contains a cable, which, ha which will be used to uh, provide power and data 
to the IDA, an international docking adapter. Um, EV2 will translate to the nadir side of the lab, uh, temp stow the cable bag, and begin routing the cable. First, he'll route a leg of it aft to node one and connect on the nadir side of node one. He'll then retrieve the EPIC MDM leg of this cable and route it zenith on the lab and then port across the vehicle. As you can see from this flyby, uh, one of the key challenges uh, EV2 Tim Peake will face during this portion of the EVA will be the tightness of the translation path and the number of other cables that uh, present snag hazards for him as he goes. Once he has completed routing the cable to the port side of Z1, he will connect uh, it to the, white, uh, to the EPIC MDM cable, which uh, EV1 left for him earlier on the EVA. He will also make two connections of the EPIC MDM cable to uh, pigtails that were left out on another cable called the MLM Ethernet cable on a previous EVA. Once this is complete, he will return to the IDA cable bag and retrieve the third and final leg of the IDA uh, cable, which he'll route forward along the lab and then zenith and forward on node two, uh, leaving it for eventual connection to the international docking adapter. Once this is complete, he will clean up his worksite and return to the airlock, and that will conclude